Welcome, welcome, folks. I, I, I got to do another intro here because this is Mr. Grant. And before we move any further, we need we need to know how we say the last name because I, I vowed to not butcher it anymore. So what do we got? Uh, Grant Amen. Grant Amen. Amen. Jeez. It, yep. So it, it's it's normally it's to announcers. It can be immense at times, and I, I've I've learned to uh, to let it you know run off the shoulder, but. Yeah, it's, it's Grant Amen. Well, All right, Grant Slippo's a Mike's an Ithaca guy with like a, a coaching degree and a minor in capital letters, so it had his brain <laughs> in an absolute pretzel when he was trying to announce it before. It was actually a minor in kickball. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, right, right. right. <laughs> well, Grant, tell us about where you are. I mean, you're in our – we're super excited to have you. Um, you know, this is – we'll get to the gas you up portion of the show, but I just want to say we're super excited to have what we believe is the next great – offensive player in the world period um excited to hear about your journey to show some of your individual development and then obviously um pump the archers and and get ready to win it win a chip or whatever you guys are calling it in the PLO world right now so <laughs> let's let, let, let's hear how you're doing and what's going on we're just chilling I'm, I'm with my my roommate Ian McKay is here um you know we're just hanging out in the in in our room for an hour we've been quarantined since we got here yesterday so we got tested immediately upon arrival um, so Ian's been here for almost 24 hours now, so he's gone a little stir crazy. I got in last night around like 6:30 ish. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a good flight. We, I, I was on the chartered plane with, with, uh, uh, 90 other PLL guys. So, um, it was, it was definitely interesting. And for me, you know, uh, walking into the bus and seeing faces that I've watched on TV for years, um, was a little, I was a, star, a little bit starstruck in the beginning, I'll be honest, but, um, you know, just happy to be here and uh, happy to be here with, with the guys and, and the guys specifically on my team. They've been great and just welcoming me, um, you know, into the program. Uh, I have a quick reaction to your roommate being Ian McKay. So I coach at Manhattan College and my first, okay. when we got there years ago, they were one in 14. Uh, and my first outside competition was against Vermont as a division one coach. And uh, I think Ian may have had 10 goals in the game against us um it was like every time i blinked Nick, he scored. Nicky, did you did you drop did you drop 10 against manhattan in a scrimmage yeah i don't know if it was 10 but <laughs> he, said, he like, says i don't know if it was 10 but it was a lot <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the next year we scrimmaged again and the game was a little more competitive we held them to like four and we were high-fiving each other on the sideline like that's ah, <laughs> only four it's not 10 Hey man, get your wins where you can, coach. You know, you built a great program. Let's not, uh, this isn't about breaking you down right now, okay? Let's get into Grant. <laughs> so, um, Grant, I mean, I'm sure you're a little starstruck. That, that's a guy with good roots, you know, to be starstruck and to see some of your, you know, I don't want to call them your idols, but people you've probably looked up to in terms of, you know, the game. Give us some names. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it, honestly, um, you know, like Kyle Harrison, obviously been watching him for 15 years at this point. So, um, you know, he's, he's definitely, you know, still a guy that has taken more of a leadership role, I think, in this whole thing. And I think he's done a great job with lacrosse in that aspect. He's got a really good perspective. Um, and then, you know, obviously uh, seeing guys um, like Rob Pinnell and, and Tom Schreiber and those guys, um, who I have a relationship with, but it's like seeing them in person is, um, you know, I, I look at, you know, those two guys, I look at Kyle, I look at Paul Rabel, um, you know, those are guys that I really have tried to emulate my game around um, over the years and, you know, trying to take little pieces from each of them and incorporate in, into my own game. And, um, you know, that's why I'm, I'm definitely really excited to be here, not only to play and compete, but also to be able to, like, I think I can get a lot better from just being here and being around this company. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to be a sponge and um, pick up, you know, certain certain things that guys are saying. And because um, because every guy seems to have a really good perspective on thing and a different perspective on things. So, um, you know, being able to use those different puzzle pieces to my advantage is, is definitely my ultimate goal with this. Yeah, it's a cool opportunity to get to play. Like Eli, when we had him on, he was marveling about getting to play with Tom Schreiber, which is is pretty cool. Um, I mean, that's a guy that mm -hmm. decided to play in the indoor league and still was the best player at that too. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I mean, we, we were watching like some film together and like some of the goals that that guy scores is just, like absurd. Like he just, yeah. 
he, he, he dodges so hard. He goes to the goal so hard every single time. Um, and, you know, he, he's definitely a guy that's respected by all. And um, for me, you know, just trying to kind of pick, pick up some stuff, um, you know, for scouting, for different types of things. Um, and, you know, he's given me pieces of advice on, you know, what he wish he would have done his rookie year a little better and what, you know, he thinks I have an opportunity for. And, um, you know, I kind of told him just, you know, continue to push me. And, um, you know, I, I want to hear it from you. I don't want to hear it from anybody else because, you know, you have my respect. So, you know, if you're telling me to, to run through a brick wall, I'll do it. You know, it's the, you've got to kind of earn your stripes and um, earning earning the captain's respect and, and my teammates' respect is definitely, you know, first and foremost goal. Awesome. Really cool, man. That's a good outlook to have, especially what seems to be a really amazing opportunity for the lacrosse community, right? To be on NBC and you're kind of coming right into it at what could be the, you know, again, our sport's best opportunity to get out there to the entire world, especially the country. So you're being a rookie at a good time here. And especially because hazing's yeah. out the door. They can't do that. Anymore, <laughs> you know, so you're protected. You're, you're protected right now. You know, I have no, no I have no, com I have no comment on any of that <laughs> stuff. I have no comment. That's right. No, it's good. That's good. We're, this is a good community that we live in. Well, tell us about your, um, your path, bro. Like coming from PA, um, and, and, and how you grew up, the likes of everything and that got you to the point you're at right now. Yeah. So, so I grew up in, uh, Doylestown, Pennsylvania and, um, I'm the youngest of three. So, uh, my, my older brother, Brandon started playing, um, I think in second or third grade and, uh, my, my older brothers are twins and then Blake followed the season after. And, um, you know, I just kind of waited, uh, until I was old enough to be able to play. Um, played soccer year round in, in the beginning. And then once first grade hit, uh, you know, I was ready to play lacrosse and, you know, I was dragged to their practices every single, every single time they practiced. So, and that was, I was water boy and, and goalie, goalie warm up guy for, for their teams for probably about a decade there. So, um, you cool. know, I, I was definitely around some, some great company in that aspect and was around older, older kids. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously my, my brothers pushed me a decent amount in the backyard um and <laughs> forced me to do some things that you know putting me in goal without any protection or anything like that um you know just toughen toughening me up you know being the being the the, the baby of the family so um but yeah so I, I continue to keep playing um and uh you know right around eighth grade uh private schools were, were kind of an option for me for high school so um I took a took a visit at the Haverford school um, and with, with coach no and absolutely loved it. Um, ended up going there for, for my four years of high school, um, played JV my freshman year, swung a little bit to varsity, um, and then, and then played varsity for, for the next three years and, um, committed to Penn state, uh, in the summer after my freshman year. So I had not even played a varsity game and I, I was committed, which was pretty cool. Um, but, uh, and then, and then obviously went to Penn state, had a, unbelievable time there um I, I would say it's just filled with so many different memories from from wins from losses from experiences on the field off the field um you know creating you know lifetime friendships um I thought it was pretty cool that I got to sit on the bus yesterday with Chris Sabia who's you know one of my good buddies and as well as uh you know a guy that I've him and I have played together since sixth grade so um you know it's it's nice to be able to kind of be back with him because um, this past year was like the first year I haven't played with him in a decade. So um, yeah. it was definitely nice and, and cool to be back with him. And um, yeah, now I'm here and uh, you know, ready to, ready to continue to keep, keep working, keep trying to improve. And um, hopefully uh, you know, along with Penn state, along with Haverford kind of bring light to, you know, both Haverford school lacrosse and Penn state lacrosse in the meantime. Um, cause obviously I wouldn't be here without, without those two programs and, and the coaches that, that helped me get here. Yeah, For sure. Now, Grant, like growing up in PA was Penn state, like the dream school, or was that just, it happened to be, that was the best option. I feel like that's always like, I went to Gettysburg and I would see Nitt Nittany Lions stuff as far as the eye can see in South central Pennsylvania. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's. Uh, First off, like it's not hard to recruit a kid to go to Penn State. Like it's it's very easy to sell the school. Um, you know, you you've got good academics, you've got great social life, you've got good athletics every single weekend. You know, in the fall we've got football, in the winter we've got wrestling and hockey, in the spring we've actually gotten a good turnout at the lacrosse games. 
Um, so like we, we have the, the ability to recruit kids. Um, and for me, it, it was a combination of two things. First, my mom and dad are alums. My brothers were actually in school when I was getting recruited and we had an overlap year. Um, they played on the club team at Penn State. And then, uh, and then also, uh, you know, when Coach Tambroni came and I think when I was, it was in 2010, um, he, came to, he came to State College and, you know, seeing everything that he did with Cornell and, and reading up about him. Um, and then, you know, obviously going on my recruiting visits with him, um, you know, hearing the guy talk. I mean, for I, I don't know if you guys have heard him, him speak in a passionate tone, but I, I mean, you're ready to run through a brick wall after it. Like you are, you like as motivated as can be. And um, basically, when he laid out the offer, I went downtown uh, to a restaurant with my with my parents, and I was like, "What are we even waiting for? Let's just go back and let's finish this thing off." Um, so I went right back and said, "You know, I'm in. Let's do this thing." Um, I still had braces. I had shaggy long hair that were <laughs> over my eyebrows and um, was probably like a buck 35, but it's okay. Yeah, I, I, uh, they took a chance on me and, um, you know, I'm definitely thankful for it. And I think all in all, it's just been a, a great, great experience on and off the field for me. And, um, you know, obviously because of Coach Tambroni and his staff and, um, you know, the university for everything that they've done. The other question I had, Grant, that I think is really compelling for your experience too. Like Mike and I are, we're old young guys now. We just, we've entered our thirties. So we like to think we're young, but we're not anymore. But we graduated uh, college in 2011. And when we were in our recruiting cycle, Penn State was like, they're fine. Like they weren't great. They weren't bad. They were fine. Mm -hmm. Right. So I feel like yeah, I, yeah. I view your time there was that, tri yeah. that ascension to now them being an elite program, you know, could you talk about that from like being recruited? Obviously it has a lot to do with when coach Tambroni got there. Um, but from being recruited to then you being part of the best season in program history, I think that's super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely, so that, that was honestly how I was recruited. I mean, coach Tambroni told every recruit, listen, we're not a blue blood program. I cannot guarantee that we are going to win a national championship. I can't guarantee that we're going to win a big 10 championship. But his thing is, he's like, I can guarantee that we are going to go to work every single day, and then I'm going to push you to be your very best. And mm -hmm. I mean, that's exactly what I got. Sometimes I liked the pushing more than others. Um, but, you know, he, that, that was how I was recruited there. And then, you know, as for my time there, um, you know, I, I remember, you know, there, there are certain moments that, that you definitely remember, but um, I think the biggest is, is really just the contrast from my freshman year to my, my fourth and fifth year um, and just the change in culture. I think culture is the biggest thing that I'm most proud of in terms of our program. Um, you knew I liked you. you know, cool. I, 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 th I, think, uh, I think Coach did a – it was not an easy experience. Like Co Coach definitely, you know, had to – he grinded. He's been there for 10 years and nine years, and he won his first playoff game last year. So, um, you know, he, he definitely – you know, he had to grind in the trenches. But um, in that aspect, I think myself, the seniors who graduated last year and the seniors from this year – um, I think that's what we're most proud of is just, you know, looking at the comparison off the field first, you know, yeah. what we do socially, um, as well as on the field, you know, there was a direct correlation. We had a great academic semester and we didn't get in trouble off the field basically the entire spring. So, the, you know, and we had the best spring that we could have possibly had, um, you know, obviously only losing to one team. So, uh, you know, there, there was a correlation and um, I think it was a mixture of buy-in with guys, but also, you know, guys just learning to have those tough conversations. And um, I think collectively the 2019 senior class or the 2015 freshman class, I kind of consider myself a part of that class. Um, you know, we all just were like, listen, let's put all the BS aside. If somebody's not doing something that holds it to, the, to our standard, get in their face and tell them, you know, what they're doing wrong and why it's not, a, why it shouldn't be a part of the program. And I think, there are some, some guys on that team that, you know, did not receive any publicity that did that. And without them, I don't think we would be, you know, where we are today. Um, and I think there's still room for improvement. That's the fun thing about sports. But love to yeah. hear that culture's king and that you guys have that peer-to-peer -peer accountability. And obviously you're a big part of, 
you know, the making Penn State what it is. And that was part of the sell. I'm sure Coach Tamperoni gave you is, yeah, we're not a blue blood program, but you have the opportunity to make us one. Um, and obviously you, you shouldered that load with your seniors and the senior classes that you were a part of. And that's awesome that you spoke directly to that culture. So, Grant, by the way, we've entered the like pump your tires segment here. We're just yes. really <laughs> okay. you're showing up right. to your first All practice, right. feeling like you're on top of the world here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That sounds, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I think it's, it comes down to a few different things. Um, you know, obviously drilling different types of split dodges is, is, is one of my big things. Um, you know, I'd like to have an array of first hitters. Um, so whether that be a, a right to right split, whether that be a right to left split, whether that be, you know, a jump split, whatever it may be. Um, you know, I like to have different options dependent on my matchup and dependent on, um, you know, long stick, short stick, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, and then secondary moves for sure. Um, with, with, you know, rolls, with Z dodges, with hesitators. Um, and, and a lot of my training, you know, my thought process on it, on it all, but a lot of my training is just a combination of everything. Um, mm. but my, my kind of mentality with it is, you know, you make an, you make an initial move and then you have to read and react to the situation. Sometimes you'll burn your guy completely clean. I'd say seven, 75 to 80%, you don't. So, you know, you got to be able to read and react and try to put a little bit of different type of pressure um, and, and use a secondary or a third or a fourth move um, to be able to beat your defender. Um, so, so that's, yeah, I mean, that's, those are, that's kind of my bread and butter. Um, I, I definitely, you know, obviously get shots in, but I mean, for me, like I kind of realize that I'm, I'm more in tight and around the goal. So, um, that's mm. definitely not as much of a focus of mine. I'd say more footwork and and being able to use combos and, and being able to kind of, you know, use deception on my defender and kind of make him think I'm doing something that I'm not. Um, so, you know, that that's kind of my thought process with it all. Um, and, you know, every single drill that I do basically, basically has that. And I, I say it to the young kids that I coach. Um, you know, the best players, no matter if they're the fastest guy on the field or the slowest guy on the field, the best players have the best footwork. So, you know, you can look at Mac O'Keefe. Mac, I love him to death. He's not going to wow you in the weight room or in the conditioning set or in the footwork. So, <laughs> nah. you know, he, know, he knows that. But if you look at him, his feet are set to shoot the ball 24-7. And so I know if I zing a pass to him through the middle, it's going to be in and out of sticking out in less than a second. And that, and that all starts with the base of the footwork. So what I preach to young kids is, is definitely going towards the footwork aspect um, more than anything. Um, stick skills are great. Do wall ball, do all that stuff. But um, it starts from the ground up. And, and obviously, you know, your, the footwork is probably the hardest to learn in my opinion. Yes. The feet are king. 100%. So when did you get picked up by the attack academy? Life. Once you grad, once you graduated? No, so we had we had all this stuff um, kind of planned pre graduation, and because uh, I, I worked with Rob last summer, and we kind of clicked, and I, we're very similar. You'd, you'd be surprised with how much of the lingo that we learned from Coach Tambroni has not changed in right. mm. over ten years. Um, so uh, you know, we we've definitely been taught in similar ways. So our our lingo is very similar, and also we kind of can can pick up pieces you know, off of each other. Um, and yeah, it's just been really good. And, and for me, you know, I definitely value it just because he's, you know, a mentor first and foremost to me. Um, for sure. And, you know, to be able to be, you know, equals with him in a business is, is pretty cool for me. Yeah. Oh, for sure. All right, Grant. So talk to us about watch. your, yeah, your double moves and your triples and your singles and, and what you got for the people. Yeah. So, yeah. So obviously, you know, being able to use, you know, a split and a roll and being able to use different types of things is, is essential for my game. And um, specifically in this one, you know, understanding where my defender was in terms of me, you know, he's covering me pretty well. And that's when, you know, those second moves need to come in. Um, right. You know, Curtis is a big, strong defenseman, but I knew I could, you know, you know, try to go with my footwork with him. Um, right. and that's kind of what I did there. Um, that one, a lot of people, if you go back to the Cornell one, a lot of people argue, uh, behind the back passes are not essential. But if you technically look at this pass in a, in just terms of angles, this is technically the, the angle that I throw the ball because of where the defender's stick is, right? I would have mm -hmm. to throw it through his stick to get it to the guy in the corner. 
But if I throw it behind my back, it goes around his stick. And yes, you need to practice behind the back passes. You can't just, you know, expect to be able to throw them. Um, oh, come on. But that's technically, <laughs> it, it, it adds, you know, in, in terms of this, like it, it is a correct play because it's, it's using the best angle. Um, and it adds a layer of deception to it, obviously looking away from my guy. Um, right. I told you with a good near side finish. But Grant, oh, that, but you work on that. Like, yes, yes. So, you know, I, I'm definitely trying that, you know, not just on the – I think the biggest thing is, is guys think when they do behind the backs on the wall, they can do it in a game. You need to do it in practice and do it live um, before you, I think you can pull it out. But, you know, that's what practice is for. And I think, you know, as I got older, when I was younger, I didn't take many risks in practice. Um, but, but as I got older, you know, I would get a little creative, you know, try a shovel shot, try behind the back, try doing things that, you know, mm-hmm. you don't normally see in an in everyday, every, uh, everyday game. Um, and, and really just, you know, understand that, you know, you can pull it. Um, you know, I look at, you know, some of these, some of these guys, uh, that are playing right now and Randy Stotts and Lyle, like those guys just, they, they see so much and they can pass it from every different angle. And that's why I'm a big right. proponent of, you know, being able to throw a sidearm pass a behind the back pass, because you never know what defender is going to be draped on you. Right. No doubt. What, what's coach Tambroni saying to you though, if that ball, that BTB is, uh, in the ground. <laughs> so it's funny, Rob, Rob Fennell was actually at that game and because uh, it was against Cornell and he texted me after the game and he's like, you know, this is BS. Coach Tambroni would have never let me throw that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, awesome. But no, he, he, he understands it. He, he, he has definitely uh, loosened the reins a little bit and, and has allowed us to be a little bit creative, make mistakes and learn. Um, now, if you're, if you're being flashy, there's a big difference, I think, for being flashy and being creative. Um, mm. And that's that kind of fine line that you need to, to watch. Um, right. So, you know, I think some guys can be flashy at times, and I think some guys right. do, do it particularly well. So this is a little little S dodge. So it's a little hesitator to X. You know, obviously coming to the face of the goal, wanting to finish in front every mm. single time. Fun fact that that's actually my only dive goal of my oh. career. Wow. I was going to ask you what um, you thought of the dive goal, the dive. I'm not. I'm not a big. I'm not a huge, huge risk taker. Um, so you know, I, I don't. I don't do too much. Um, but if the opportunity presented itself, you know, go for it. Right. This this one's so this one I, I goes back. This is a right to right split. So we talked about that in the beginning. Um, a right to right split. The reason that I use this is, you know, I I understand and and a big thing that I I encourage younger players to to do is you know take both sides of the pick, reject it sometimes, be able to do it, mm-hmm. be able to you know accept it other times, um, and be able to kind of just you know mix and match. Um, and and that's kind of what I did there. Um, so what's your one, teaching point? What's your I, teaching point? Let's back up to that. What's your teaching point about rejecting a screen? If you see a defender move his head, if he's so concerned about the pick, slice him right over the top. It, it, yeah. it works every single it, it works more times than not. And if, if nothing else, you get a half a step on a defender, which will earn a slide. Right, right. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, body. So that's a, wow. this isn't this is an easy inside roll for a defender who tries to get a little bit too physical. Um, right. And I knew this. I knew this pregame that that defender in particular tries to body and tries to get physical. And I think you know an underrated thing for me is being able to take hits and um, mm. kind of use my strength a little bit. Uh, I think that's something that's not not a lot of people know. Um, now I'm not going to go try to back down Tucker Durkin, but. <laughs> uh, I, I know at least somewhere where I stand. Sorry, Grant. Um, can we run, I, just, just wanted, I just wanted to run that one, the inside roll back one more time, because it kind of illustrates your yep. point about like not diving. I love that just diving is not enough here. You run across the front of the net, whereas other guys are like, ah, that area yeah. is scary. I'm just going to dive. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I try to do. I try to aim for about a yard above the crease line every single time when I'm dodging. Um, just because if I have to dive, you know, go for it. But you know, I, I'd rather not just to, just to, I, I don't want there to be any ifs, ands, or buts. Like I, you know, mm. it, I yeah. think a lot of dive goals are good, but there's always discretion about it. And you never, guys don't get, I, I think guys are looked at as a different view for diving. And, you know, I want to earn, earn everything. So, um, you know, aiming for that above, 
one yard above is definitely what I do uh, in, in, in every single dodge. Um, this one is a really good example of, of, of max footwork. Um, so he catches the ball one, two, three shots out into the back of the net. So you know, that, that goes to that foot, that, go, that goes to that footwork. Like he's not beaten, you know, guys with a lot of speed or quickness, but he catches it in stride and is able to get, get a shot off, you know, and that also pings the top right corner. Um, so like that aspect is, is where that footwork thing comes into play. That's the same cool. game, yeah. another, another behind the back. I was going to ask. So this is two behind the backs in same game, four and three that led to goals. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Casual. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We were feeling oh. that game. Got to be honest. And then this one was the one that this one went a little viral. Um, oh yeah. You hammocked the best defender in the country. Uh, oh. I, I'd, I'd argue somebody was different for best defender in the country, but great. Uh, you know, Great. <laughs> who do we got? Yeah, no, right. Who do we got? I because say specifically I'm, that know, I'm year. Just... I I played with him. Uh, wore the number sixteen for us, Sabia. Not a doubt in my mind. Love it. Love it. No I doubt. went against him in practice every day. My arms felt it every single day. <laughs> right. Right. All right. Hey, Sabes, yeah, this, you're gonna I'm... have to get you on next <laughs> so that we can talk about the best can, defender I, that Grant's ever I gone can, against. Uh, I can. Uh, I I can give you his number. He I'm sure he would love to do that. <laughs> um, so this was this was Rutgers game, uh, forty seconds left, tie game. Um, you know, uh, somebody that I always look at, and if, if if there's any off ball guys that are watching this, a guy to look at in college lacrosse is number twenty five, Jack Kelly. The dude hmm. never stops moving, and if you notice, he always has his stick up and ready, like he hmm. is already ready to score right here. Um, and that's something that he does so well. And then obviously. You know, he catches, takes the face of the goal, finishes. Um, and, you know, he's he is somebody who I was texting with him yesterday. Um, he reminds me a, a little bit uh, of Marcus Holman, the way that he moves off ball, just doesn't stop moving. And right. so I was texting with him yesterday just to watch Marcus during the series because um, there are some nuances that I think Jack could benefit from. But Jack's also a really dangerous guy with the ball on a stick, which makes him, you know, I, I think he's, he has the potential to be, you know, first, second team All-American next year, no doubt. Awesome. I got two questions. Um, first is, you know, mm -hmm. looked this under 40. So Coach Dambroni had, you had <laughs> no leash. Um, and then second thing here is, what what do we got here? What's this this fan grouping that just blows it was, that was up alumni. That was alumni. Yeah, that was alumni weekend. So those are all alumni. And it's it's probably safe to say they were pretty tuned up over there. So um, <laughs> they were they were going nuts. I felt bad for the kid covering me because they were saying some they were saying, chirping him pretty good. But um, he uh, they, they those guys were awesome. And yeah, so that was alumni weekend. And then we saw those guys post game, and they were all jacked up um, after that oh, one. I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. Let's get another dodge one. Oh, perfect. That, Here we go. Dodge me. Nice little under split. So um, th this is a good one to talk about here, Grant, because I think a lot of attackmen, we talked about it here at BU, you're either going to do an under split or a swim, depending on mm -hmm. the stick of the defender and where he, and how he's approaching you. So how do you process that as you're approaching your dodge? I, I tend to go under, to be honest. Um, I, I think it's, it's easier to be more explosive out of it. I think the swim slows me down. Um, hmm. That's just me personally, um, but you know I, I definitely think so. If you notice, this is this is uh, a two-step split. Yep. You know, obviously when I'm when I have the stick in my left hand, one step left, one step right, back to my or one step right, one step left, then back to my right. Um, and and that's that's what I tend to do a decent amount of time. Um, and then the other thing that that I you know tend to to tell kids because I think guys think it's pretty cool to do all these crazy stick fakes and cradles in these days. And if you watch this pass, like there is no cradle. I, I take the stick from one hand on the stick, put two on it and snap my wrist. And, mm, you know, yeah. yes, I, I do that. I can do that and have the you know top shooter in the, in the country, possibly the world, you know, catch it um, and shoot it, which makes my life a little easier. Jack Kelly was wide open on this play, but we talked about that at a later date. For sure. Yeah, we can, we can, 
That's awesome. I mean, the efficiency of your hand movement, you know, you don't know when someone's going to be open. You don't know where your head's going to be and what part of your reads you're in. So that, that's, that's a great lesson for the, for the young folks. Yeah, and that's, as a defensive guy, it makes our life so much tougher when the guy doesn't take two cradles, three cradles to get the ball where it's going. I mean, a, the beautiful thing for a guy like yeah. you with how good of a dodger you are is you get eyes. When you're dodging, everybody's looking towards you. Right. So if you can get the ball out of your stick quicker, you're going to take advantage of the defense, maybe being lazy with their eyes off ball. Yeah. I mean, that, that's definitely the biggest key for me. And that's something that, that Colby Kniece has always told me our goalie. Um, just even with my shooting is, is just having a quick release um, specifically as you get older. And it's what I tell you know the kids that I coach is shot velocity is great. But if it takes you an hour and a half to shoot the ball, you're never going to play on the field. So, you know, re reduce the cradles, reduce the thing. And if you have a quick release, like, I'll be honest, I probably can't break 90 miles an hour when I'm shooting. Um, but if I have a quick release and it's inside eight yards and I put it in a decent spot on the goal, there's no shot the goalie stays it unless he gets it. Right, so right. being able to have just a quick wrist. Um, and that's – I've kind of learned that from more Canadian roots, I'd say, Canadian guys that I've, I've studied. Um, you know, obviously my roommate's a, a Canuck and – um, we were just talking about it earlier today, how he, he does a great job of combining kind of an American windup, but has still has that Canadian wrist. Um, and mm. I think that's, that's definitely something that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, how he's, he, he can cross, you know, both, both ways and still have a big windup, but it comes out so much faster and so much quicker. that It's really tough for a goalie to see. Mm, for sure. You speak of those wrists, right? I mean, the Canadians are so great with that wrist strength and that flexibility. So why don't you talk to us about the attack Academy, you know, where you're teaching the, you know, this two-step split and your jump split, you alluded to a lot of it. Why don't you take an opportunity to, to discuss that? Yeah. So, so I, I joined on, um, you know, Rob Pinnell and I have teamed up with that and, um, it's a, it's really a, uh, I, I think personally think it's a great app. Um, so it's just in the app store called A3 Lacrosse. And, um, so essentially what, what it is, is, you know, when you sign up, you're, you're given access to, uh, I think we're at 50 plus drills at this point, um, for all offensive players. Um, and then, uh, if you subscribe, so there are three different subscription levels, um, you know, the higher the subscription level the more intimate one-on-one -on -one interaction that you have with Rob and I. Um, so you're able to submit videos, have us critique it. Um, and, and then, you know, if you get the best, the, the top option, you even get to do, you know, a one-on-one -on -one FaceTime call with us. Um, so, you know, you know, it's, it's definitely something that I think I would have benefited from when I was younger, just thinking about, you know, how much I tried to emulate guys games and um, mm. to be able to have one-on-one -on -one access. Um, and then, and then, on top of it all, you know, we do three Zooms for all subscribers every single week. So tonight um, we got the Monday meetup. Uh, I think Rob's going to be interviewing his roommate, Scotty Raj. Um, so, you know, we, we, we try to have different guests on um, every week uh, and, and really try to just, you know, give the kids different perspectives. So it's not just us talking the whole time. And then, um, you know, Wednesdays and Fridays, we normally either have a footwork session, a wall ball session. Um, and that's, free to all subscribers, no matter what uh, your membership is. And um, we've, we've really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it a lot because it's pushed me to, and challenged me to, to coach a little bit better because, you know, you're on a Zoom call, it's, you're not hands-on and you really have to articulate things a little bit better, which I actually enjoy because it's, it's definitely pushed me to explain things a little bit better. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been a great experience and the hope is that we can continue to keep doing it and, um, you know, have more kids sign up as, as we go. Um, the hope is that, you know, we have to hire more people to work it because we have too many kids to, to take care of and we want to make sure that we're spreading the wealth. But um, all in all, I think the number one thing with the, with the app and with the experience is just, you know, the, the intimate interaction that you get with, you know, two guys who, um, you know, I, I haven't quite proven myself at a professional level, but, you know, you have probably the best attackmen, you know, in the past decade you know, playing, uh, and, and as well, who's still playing, you know, able to, uh, you know, communicate with you at the touch of his fingertips. So, um, you know, I think that part is really, really cool. Um, and, you know, I, I would encourage, you know, any young, young guy to get, at least give it a shot. Um, and, uh, I, I would be hopeful, 
um, almost guarantee that, you know, you aren't going to be disappointed um, with just the pure value of, of, you know, the app that we have. It's super unique. It's not like LeBron has got the, uh, well, I guess LeBron's not a good example. Kyrie Irving, the point guard academy, right? LeBron plays too many positions, so I couldn't go with him. But you know what I'm saying? It's like you have two of the best attackmen mm-hmm. in the world right now, and I appreciate how you say you got to prove yourself. But, you know, I'm not allowed to bet. But as a betting man in my dome to myself and with John and my friends, um, where I can just prove that I'm right, I got my – I got my. Uh, you know, I can't say my money on you, but I got it on you. Hypothetical money on him. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Hypothetical. There you go, NCAA. Leave that's me alone. But really cool um, that you that you have created that. And again, unlike any sport out there, lacrosse is allowing that type of access because of how small knit our community is, and because um, you know the opportunities that you guys are creating. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, I would also like to add and and say, um, you know, give credit to, to Rob. Obviously, you know, he's a guy who I look at on the field as a huge mentor, but off the field, he's been phenomenal. And I think the biggest goal for him and I um, is to continue to expand. And um, hopefully, you know, as we, we didn't really, no, no names attached to it or anything like that, because, you know, we don't want to be biased towards, you know, a certain type of attackman. So, you know, if a Mac O'Keefe, if a, uh, you know, a Ryan Brown, if a guy who plays a little bit different than us, you know, wants to help and wants to, you know, get in and, you know, be able to uh, broaden our horizon, um, you know, we encourage that because, you know, I think there, there are types of attackmen all over the place and, you know, everybody has their niche. Um, you just got to be able to find it. All right. I wanted to pivot and, and sort of wrap things up, kind of looking now towards I know we talked a little bit about uh, what you're doing and where you are, but maybe a little bit more personal, like what you're excited about for this. Obviously, it's your first go around on this, but, you know, a lot of the guys we've talked to, they're really excited for this because it's literally the most, it's the most legitimate pro lacrosse season there's ever been because it's consecutive. Um, And I think it's going to make for the best lacrosse that we've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think first and foremost, I think as a fan of the sport, like I'm just, I'm jacked up to be able to watch it. Like we don't play for the first two days. Like I'm going to be in the stands and I'll be taking notes like on the guys, that, you know, both for scouting report purposes and for like, if uh, somebody on another team does something pretty cool, I'm going to write it down and I'm going to try and I might try it. Like um, I, I think that's one thing that's really cool about lacrosse is the creativity. Um, so I'm excited to be able to witness that and, and be a fan of that first and foremost. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think the, the, the biggest thing that I'm, I'm excited for is the exposure that it's going to give to the sport. And um, one thing that, you know, I, I've definitely been more active on, on social media than I, than I was in college since I, since I, you know, graduated. But um, one thing that I'm going to, you know, try to continue to do is, is just be as interactive as I can with the fans. Um, of, of the sport. I was watching the MJ documentary on the plane and, um, you know, his mentality was if there's one little kid that's never seen him play in the stands, you know, he needs to prove himself to that kid. And so I'm going to kind of do the, do the similar thing and, um, you know, try to be as interactive and try to show as much as I can um, to them. Cause you know, obviously that that's content that's invaluable to them um, that, that I think could make an impact. And um, I also realized that, you know, from a, from a viewership point, uh, standpoint, like we're going to be playing in front of a lot of people, um, you know, seeing Drew Brees Instagram about lacrosse, like he's like my, he's my quarterback in the NFL. I love watching him, um, seeing him post that was like gave me goosebumps. Um, so the viewership I, and, and the visibility of the sport, I think it's, it's definitely the biggest thing I'm excited for, um, because I, I think it's going to be really good for us. Um, you know, and I'm not playing the MLL, PLL stuff, like, the fact that the MLL lacrosse, that MLL lacrosse is on right now, I'm watching it. I'm enjoying it. I've got buddies on the team and, you know, I'm cheering them on. Um, you know, I, I don't think there's a fight between the two. I think it's just we have a three-week stretch where, uh, you know, we, we, we own basically some sort of viewership to, to any fan throughout the world. Yeah, what a time. What a time. Because right now people that love sports are dying to watch something. Um, right. And, and it's such a cool opportunity for our sport. Uh, unprecedented opportunity for our sport. So I, I know we'll be watching. We're big archers, guys. Um, yeah, coached huge. Up, oh, coached up uh, Eli, and then uh, Adam Gittleman's one of my best friends from growing up. So um, we're definitely awesome. big archers, guys. Um, what's it feel like to be playing an, on an attack unit with two of the best scorers in our sport? I was going to say, those, those two, we haven't mentioned them. Uh, 
I mean, they're, they're unbelievable. Um, first, first and foremost, two great guys, I think is, is the most important thing. They've welcomed me on like any, any little question that I have, I just shoot them a text. They get right back to me, um, you know, FaceTime and me just, you know, really welcoming me to the, to the squad, I think was the biggest thing that I, I gathered from them. And then, you know, with the on-field sessions that we were able to have when I went out to Utah about a month ago, um, I mean, they're, they're to they they're so crafty in the way that they move off the ball. Their releases are so quick. They, I mean, they they're constantly talking. I think one thing that I pick up from Marcus um, is that he's just constantly looking for ways to improve. He sent me something of a soccer midfielder, uh, or is sent in in our group me uh, about like you know how a soccer midfielder is always you know surveying the field. He's like, I'm gonna do this in training camp, and it's you know I think he's he's 29 years old and he's still searching for that edge. He has, you know, two U S national teams under his belt. Like he is a decorated player, you know, as decorated as you can be yet. He's still looking for more. Um, so I think that speaks volume to his character and um, you know, will, will is the same way. Just texting me, you know, different things about, you know, what I'm seeing um, if I'm feeling comfortable in the offense, like different things like that, that I think go way further than just the field. Um, and, you know, I, I like to consider them good friends at this point. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to tomorrow morning, we got practice. I'm excited to strap it up and, you know, go at it with those guys. Cause I, you know, I know they have my back first and foremost, which, um, and I, and I'll do the same for them. Can you give us a teaser what that offense might look like or the ball will be moving fast. <laughs> I will <say> that. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> Not That's a lot right. of, uh, I would, I would say not a lot of unassisted goals. Sick. It's the best type of lacrosse right yeah. there, brother. I mean, it's really cool. Amen. Amen to that. I mean, you're, you're a guy that prides himself on being a great passer. And then you got, I think the most underrated part about Tom Schreiber is how good of a passer that guy is too, like in the midfield. Right. I think that's and, his best. I think that's his best attribute. That's for sure. Mean, no, no questions right. asked. Um, right. I still don't know how he does it on the run. Like he, that the lefty on the run through to Will last year against the Redwoods was the stupidest pass I've ever seen. <laughs> like you can't, you shouldn't be able to do that. I mean, he was, he was full speed, thirty yards away, and just like zings it across the field through the entire defense. It was, he, he yeah. he's he's an impressive generational talent that, um, as I said, you know, I'm just gonna try to learn from him because he's he's pretty damn good. Yeah, being good is fun. I said that last episode, but being good at sports <laughs> is fun, especially lacrosse, our sport. So, well, Mr. Grant, amen. We, we really appreciate having you on, man. Um, it's awesome spending our time with you. And I can't speak to John, but I am going archers all the way. How you doing? Uh, make this, let's, let's, let's bring this sucker home or keep it home. Whatever the allegiance is with the archers, um, let's make this happen, man. Let's do it. Yeah, and I uh, love it. Love Grant, it. we may have to check back in with you in like a week or two when you guys are making your playoff push, maybe a couple minutes here or there. Let us know how things are going. 100%. Happy to do it. Happy to do it, fellas. Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. thank you. And, and thanks for putting up with Ian, you know, while he's playing video games and being able to stay <laughs> dialed in. Um, we'll Ian. have to. He's pretty dialed in. He's pretty dialed in in chill right now, I got to be honest. Oh, nice. Who, who takes the cake in the Archers NHL, you know, tourney? I don't. I don't know. I'm not a video game guy, so I don't really know. Um, so, yeah. I, so, not I'm you. Not a, Got not it. A video not, you. Not, well, not me. Not I appreciate me. you keeping them off screen because I was starting to get PTSD just from him being near the interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Good. Well, thanks, brother. Be good and good luck and stay healthy and have fun. No problem, fellas. Thanks. Appreciate it, Grant.